Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Hello students, this week we will focus on uh, how to design a feedback control system for any chemical engineering equipment. So uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks we have seen what is feedback control, uh, we have seen how a PID controller works, we have also seen what are the extreme values uh, of uh, the controller parameters which can be used so as to ensure the stability of a system. So we will kind of use all this uh, information which uh, we have obtained uh, seen so far into in applying it to real life chemical engineering examples. So here is the object uh, list of objectives for this particular week and uh, we will see that uh, this design of a feedback control system is uh, done in three different steps, uh, we will call them as sub problems and we will tackle each of those problems uh, in this uh, week. And, uh, According as uh, we have only seen PID controllers so far, uh, we will be focusing most of our analysis based on the use of PID controllers. Wherever uh, it is very customary or very common uh, to use advanced controller, I will make some remarks about that connection. So let us get started. So in this week, uh, what we will be seeing is if uh, you are given any chemical engineering equipment, how do we go about designing feedback control on that particular process. So let us take an example of a simple gas surge tank. Most of the times we have seen a liquid surge tank, this time just for change we will take a gas surge tank which means it is a day tank, a uh, lot of times uh, whenever you have a gas as a raw material, uh, you would have a day tank uh, to mon where the feed gas will come from the storage or from a customer pipeline. So this is the feed flow. and then it will go to downstream process. So let us say this is a very simple system uh, which we have to consider and uh, how do we go about designing a feedback control system. So we will see what sort of questions uh, do we need to ask. So the first question. Uh, the fundamental question which we have to ask is what needs to be controlled? So this is the primary question which you have to ask whenever you are given with any process that what is the controlled variable? So the answer to this is identify controlled variables. or variables. So for this particular system, uh, we know that uh, it is a surge tank, uh, the state variable or the reason why we have kept this particular tank uh, is uh, to maintain a certain pressure of gas which is going to go to the downstream process unit. So um, the control variable in such a tank is typically pressure of the stream which leaves this tank which is same as the pressure, more or less same as the pressure inside this tank. So the first question we have to ask is uh, what is the control variable and lot of times uh, so there are different types of uh, controlled variables as we go on analyzing different uh, examples we will come to that. But primarily what you have to see is what is the purpose of that particular equipment and it will give you an answer about what is the primary control variable of that particular process. The next question uh, we have to ask is. How do we control it in terms of manipulation? 
so if you have to really control pressure inside this vessel uh, what are the handles or what are the things which you can manipulate in case pressure is not equal to its set point and uh, how do we bring it to its set point so in other words that means we have to identify manipulated variables and then lastly the third question before even going forward in terms of design is how are controlled variables which we typically represent as y and u are going to be paired. Now this question is irrelevant for this particular example as there is only one con um, So uh, we have seen that uh, the second question is how do we manipulate it. So for this particular process uh, there are three different possibilities of manipulation. One is you can manipulate the feed flow uh, so that if the pressure in inside the tank increases you reduce the feed flow. The second option is if uh, you want to control the pressure by using the outlet flow. So if the pressure goes above the value the outlet wall will open. And the third option is combination of the two. You can use both inlet as well as outlet walls to control the pressure. So there are, so when uh, the third question when I ask how are Y and U going to be paired, so there are three options of pairing. One is pressure with feed, other is pressure with outlet and the third one is pressure with feed plus outlet. So before even going uh, forward in terms of designing a control system for this process, we have to identify what is the control variable, what are the possible manipulated variables which will give you multiple different combinations of inputs and outputs and eventually selecting the best one out of those and uh, so that uh, you know what is the manipulated variable and what is the control variable on which the corresponding feedback control loop will be implemented. So all these three questions essentially decide what is the going to be the structure of the con feedback control system. This particular problem is known as synthesis problem. Now here I have given you a very simple example where there was only one controlled variable and three possible uh, ways in which uh, and two manipulated variables so that uh, there are three different possibilities of inputs and outputs. However, when we go into more detail, more elaborate examples, you will see that uh, the, as you have more number of controlled variables and manipulated variables, the number of options and even the different ways in which these can be paired grow exponentially and uh, therefore a synthesis problem becomes very tricky, it is a very active area of research and this is the first thing which you have to uh, answer uh, before even going into the uh, implementation of a feedback control system. So this first thing is the synthesis problem. Now once you know what uh, is going to be the manipulated variable and what is the controlled variable, uh, the next thing which you have to do is what type of controller will we be using. <coughs> so this was problem number one. When we talk about the second thing, then the question comes is given y and u pair. what type of controller to use. So as I said we are mostly uh, limiting our uh, discussion to PID controllers. So uh, the answer to this uh, in this context will be whether we are going to use a P controller or a PI controller or a PID controller. So 
So, uh, we have to answer uh, this particular question once we have decided about the inputs and outputs. So, this particular section, uh, this particular problem decides the logic of the control system. So, depending on whether you have a P, PI or PID controller, they have different logic. Uh, P controller penalizes only the current error, PI controller will have current and past contributions, PID will have past, present and future contributions. So, all these uh, will decide the logic of the control system and this particular problem is known as a selection problem. So, this is the second problem. And then lastly, once we have uh, decided what is the input and output as well as the type of a controller, then the last task remains what are the corresponding values of the controller parameters. So, the next question which we ask is, for given y and u as well as the type of the controller what are the values of the controller parameters and when I say what are the values these are the best values uh, which somebody will use. So, in terms of PID controller it will be what is the value of controller gain, what is the value of integral time constant or what is the value of derivative time constant. So, this particular uh, sub problem or this particular pro question tries to answer what is the implementation of feedback control. So, once we have the values of this uh, controller parameters, you can punch those in into the control system and the final kind of feedback control system will be ready to go. So, this particular problem is known as a tuning problem. So, when we solve all these three problems that means we have completely designed the feedback control system. Okay. So, let us start with uh, different, uh, in, so now what we are going to do is we are going to cover different uh, example systems and we will try to uh, focus on the first problem which is the synthesis problem. <coughs> So, the next example which we are going to consider is inline blender. So, a lot of times uh, in our chemical industry uh, we have to mix two streams and uh, typically there is no mixer which is provided but just two lines uh, which mix together and so let us say you have two streams A and B which uh, you have to mix. Uh, to get the final blend. So, in this case uh, this comes at the flow rate of W A, this comes at flow rate of W B uh, and let us say this is a pure component and uh, so these are this is a binary blending uh, where these are the two pure streams. Uh, so, in terms of one of the variables this becomes composition 1 mole fraction 1 this becomes mole fraction 0 and uh, the objective of blending uh, typically is to attain a certain blend flow and a certain blend composition. So, this is a fairly common uh, example uh, uh, type of simple system which you will see. So, let us now try to solve the <coughs> synthesis problem. So, what are the different questions which we have to ask? The first question to ask is what is or what are the control variables? So, 
So in order to answer that question, we have to ask what is the purpose of this particular unit. So this particular unit uh, is uh, there uh, because we want to achieve a certain blend flow and you want to achieve a certain purity of the blended material. So that uh, tells me there are two control variables, one is the total flow and one is the composition. Then the next question we have to ask is what are the possible manipulated variables? So here there are two uh, possibly two variables which you can change. One is you can change the flow of stream A and you can change the flow of stream B. So there are two manipulated variables. <coughs> one is WA and the other is WB. And then the last question which we have to ask is how are these two Y's and U's paired? So I would ask you to pause this video for a bit and then try to figure out if these are the two controlled variables and these are the two manipulated variables, what are the different ways uh, in which uh, we can implement a controller? So hopefully you have tried to figure out uh, the answer to the question which I had asked earlier. So if this is the system, uh, primarily there are two simple ways uh, or options in which uh, we can achieve uh, this control. One is you can control W using WA and you can control X by using WB. So that is one option. Similarly, there is another option that you can control W by using WB and X by WA. So both these options, uh, what we are going to have is you will have this as controller 1 and this will be controller 2. So again this is controller 1. So as we have two control variables, uh, we are going to, in each of those cases, we are going to use two separate controllers and uh, each of those controllers uh, will have a single output and a single input. So all these are known as multi-loop single input single output strategy. So each of these individually uh, would be similar to what we have studied so far. All we have studied was a single input single output type of a controller and then so this will be one such controller this will be another such controller. However, for this system, uh, as we will see uh, to almost in the last week of this uh, course, that uh, such a strategy where you have different uh, controllers which do not interact with each other, uh, we are sort of independently deriving these controllers. This will result in very poor performance and the performance can be improved by having a single controller. So the third option is so both these values are taken together and simultaneously they will give you what should be the manipulated variables. So this type of a controller which uses multiple outputs and has multiple inputs is known as a multi-input, multi-output controller or a MIMO controller. So for this particular system, uh, there are three possible architectures which are possible. Either you can go with two single input, single output or two CISO loops wherein there are two possible options depending on the pairs of between outputs and inputs or you can have a full blown controller which takes all the manipulated, uh, which takes all the controlled variables and simultaneously out obtains the values for all the manipulated variables. As it turns out, uh, this particular controller uh, 3 uh, for this particular system works much better compared to these types of CISO controller pairings. So when we are talking about this synthesis problem, 
we have to decide about which of these three which out of these three configurations we are going to go ahead with because all the subsequent selection and tuning problem would be dependent on the particular selected structure. Let us now consider another example. This time we will consider a flash vessel. You have some stream which you are going to flash inside a vessel which will generate some vapor at flow rate D and certain liquid at flow rate L or B and you will also provide some heat Q. So for this particular system uh, let us try to answer uh, these questions again. So we are trying to solve the synthesis problem. So question 1 was identify the controlled variables. So let us uh, first ask the question about what is the primary reason for this particular piece of equipment. So we are using flash vessel because uh, uh, the stream which we are getting is uh, probably has multiple components and uh, we want to separate it into two phases such that each of those phases are richer in one of the components. So as this is a flash vessel, it is not a full blown distillation column, this is typically used uh, when you have very high large difference in volatility or you want to get rid of some of the contaminants. So typically uh, this type of a vessel is implemented so that you want to knock off uh, or uh, vaporize some of the low boiling uh, impurities from your product so that what you get out at as the liquid stream has very low composition of these more volatile components. So typically uh, that is represented by <coughs> what you get as the base purity. <coughs> So the primary controlled variable here is the purity at the bottom stream. It may also in certain cases be the purity at the vapor stream. So this is the primary controlled variable. But simply having this particular controller will not going to uh, be efficient because uh, there are some additional controlled controls which have to be put in uh, into this system and these are typically known as secondary control. These are there to ensure safety or stability. So again a uh, rule of thumb is implement inventory control. So for this particular flash vessel there are two types of inventories. There is a liquid inventory, how much liquid is present inside this vessel. You want to ensure that there is sufficient liquid inside this vessel. Uh, it should not go dry or it should not overflow, it should not fill in the complete vessel. And also there is a vapor inventory. It means how much vapor is present inside this vessel. As uh, the flash vessel works on the principle of vapor liquid equilibrium, you have to maintain sufficient amount of vapor and sufficient amount of liquid inside this system. So that's uh, what this rule of thumb says. You have to have a control over the inventories. So when you talk about liquid inventory, it means how much liquid is present or it will result in level control. So level has to be controlled in this vessel. When we talk about vapor inventory, we talk about the pressure. So we have added two more control variables, one is level and one is pressure.
let us look at now manipulated variables i have shown three manipulated variables here one is the vapor flow one is the liquid flow and another is the heat duty so you have three outputs three inputs so how many ciso combinations are possible so there are six options so you have to select out of these six options which is the best option uh, which you are going to go forward with so as you can we can do this uh, for all sorts of example systems uh, and what i want to drive at is so let us say if you take a distillation column uh, such as the one shown here you will see that the distillation column has uh, five controlled uh, variables uh, if this is a binary distillation column we'll have some control of the purity here at the top purity at the bottom you also have two two liquid hold ups uh, two liquid inventories in the system one is the reflux uh, drum level and other one is the reboiler or the bottom of the column level sump level and then lastly you have to control the vapor inventory which is given by the pressure control so there are five controlled variables and there are five manipulated variables as well which uh, refer to the product flow bottom flow uh, condenser duty reboiler duty and a reflux flow so this particular system has uh, five controlled variables five manipulated variable and in general there are 120 options so even for a single distillation column you have 120 different ways in which you can pair uh, these uh, five controlled variables with manipulated variables and all these 120 are simple ciso pairings we have not even looked at uh, the multi variable multi input multi output controller and uh, those will eventually increase the number of options even further and if you go to a real life size problem let us say a hda process hydro d alkylation of toluene to get benzene uh, it's a very fairly commonly studied process a benchmark process so for this particular process you have 22 controlled variables uh, 24 manipulated variables and the number of ciso pairs go to 10 raised to 23 so all i am trying to drive you at is uh, so this synthesis problem is not a straight forward problem the bigger the system becomes uh, the number of options go to a very high value so you need a certain type of guidance in terms of how do you go about selecting the best structure as i said this is a very active area of research and uh, Uh, there are sometimes heuristics uh, which are uh, followed uh, in order to go about uh, the pairing and the type of controller uh, so just to summarize uh, what we do in the synthesis problem is uh, you decide what are the controlled variables uh, what are the manipulated variables and then uh, how do you pair them so we'll right now restrict only to multi loop ciso control strategy so you have to select uh, which particular input uh, is uh, used to control a particular output so when you want to do that uh, you typically focus on two particular things one is that input should have a direct effect on the output so that uh, that particular action is very fast and the other thing which you want to do is uh, when you do this particular uh, when you when this controller works it should not disturb all the other variables so the effect of that input should be exclusively on that output and when i say almost that uh, this is not in our hand most of the time when a variable changes uh, its effect on all the outputs is decided by the process all we want to do is uh, when we select the input output pair uh, it should be selected such that uh, the effect on other variables is minimum this is done uh, through interaction analysis again we will focus on that uh, in the last uh, week of this particular course and uh, more of this will come when we talk about multi variable control so that is what we do in a synthesis problem so we'll take a short break and when we come back uh, we'll look at the selection problem thank you